There's a sort of vicious cycle that happens a lot to trilogies where the first thing, it's good, it's fine, it's got potential, but the second thing, oh boy, that's the one. It nails it, it improves in a lot of ways, it's really good, and then everyone gets hyped for the third thing and it's just, eh. Sometimes it sucks, sometimes it just doesn't manage to do what the second work did to the original, and it comes out disappointing. Okay, okay, examples. Mass Effect 1, solid game, sets up an interesting world, gameplay is unpolished. Now Mass Effect 2, now we're talking. The gameplay is improved, the focus is shifted onto the crew, their quests, and their relationship to the world, which was what made the first game so good. So, oh my god, that's nuts. How are they gonna end it off? Oh. Bioshock. Now this game basically defined the entire generation. Writing, level design, shooting that for 2008 felt really good. Atmosphere you could basically drown in. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because it's in the ocean. Bioshock 2. Arguably worse writing wise, but the story is more personal. The combat still holds up to this day, and they took away that stupid fing pipe hacking minigame 10 out of 10. Best game. Bioshock Infinite? Uh, I mean, it looks pretty. Borderlands. Solid game. It sets up an interesting world and it has unique shooter looter mechanics that weren't really around back then. Borderlands 2. Sheesh! It takes everything fun about the first game, blows it up. The shooting is better, the leveling is better, the characters are more dynamic, the writing is cringy, but it's 2012, so nobody cares because everything is cringy. I'm the head of state. You're like a head of cabbage. And then they announce Borderlands 3. Uh oh. Don't forget to like, follow, and obey. Ahead of cabbage. Fallout 1 and 2. The developers went bankrupt before they could even make a third one, and Bethesda said, nope, resurrected the franchise from its grave just so that they could make a disappointing third game. Even though there are definitely exceptions to this trend, I'm starting to think Valve has the right idea here, guys. All that being said, before the bankruptcy and the Bethesda acquisition, there was going to be a third Fallout game. Prior to the bankruptcy, there was a title in the works codenamed Van Buren. There's a tech demo of the game out there, and as you can see, it looks totally different from the look of the originals. There were a lot of new additions the team was planning to make, such as real-time combat and the ability to play in co-op. Unfortunately, we wouldn't get to see co-op Fallout for a while. After the bankruptcy, the Van Buren project was scrapped entirely, and Bethesda took up creating Fallout 3 as they wanted it. A lot of classic Fallout heads, myself included, really mourn the loss of the Van Buren project. Would it have followed the same curse as Mass Effect, Borderlands, and Bioshock? We'll never know. But the idea of the team behind Fallout 1 and 2 working on anything is something we would have taken. And seeing this version of Fallout 3 scrapped for the Fallout 3 we got rightfully made some people frustrated. Enough people, in fact, that there is more than one group at work right now trying to finish the Van Buren project. There was a lot of information regarding the story mechanics and all the other ideas the team had for the project that they basically laid out on the table so that now, modders, years later, can pick them up and pick the project up from where they left it off. One of these teams is focusing on recreating the game in the gameplay style that Van Buren was intended to be, whereas the project I'm going to be talking about today is an imagining of what Van Buren might have looked like were it developed in the engine of the original games. The mod is Fallout Yesterday, and so far, it's not finished. It's decently well along, and the team has been at it for a long, long time. But it's not quite complete, unlike 1.5 and Nevada, which are, aside from translations and bug fixes they might patch in, complete and finished products. Because Fallout Yesterday isn't, this video is intended to be more of a highlight and overview rather than in-depth critique. If you're interested in this project, I have a link to their Patreon in the description where you can find a download for the current build, as well as a way to directly support the project and the people who make it possible. First, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the mod, and then I'm going to dive into an interview with Hexer, the lead developer. Let's go. Van Buren was going to be a very different game from the originals in terms of gameplay, and while this mod doesn't feature the real-time combat or multiplayer support Van Buren was supposed to have, it does differ from the originals in a handful of ways. Right from character creation, many things are evident. The pre-made characters are really well designed and fleshed out unlike the ones in the originals which to me felt kind of bland and cookie cutter. But what's really interesting is that just like you were supposed to be able to in Van Buren, you can play as a ghoul or a super mutant throughout Fallout yesterday. These races have different attribute bonuses and characters react differently to you based on what race you're playing. Super cool addition and I can't wait to see what they do with it as the mod continues development. There are also a ton of new perks and traits, all of which are super cool. The story opens, as Van Buren was going to, in a prison. 
you are in a U.S. government facility deep underground with many, many other inmates who have their own stories, quests, and knowledge you can learn about. The prison area is the first area you come across, and it's actually really, really big, with multiple floors, unique characters, all of which made it so that the majority of my time with this mod was spent here. You're summoned to an automated trial, which you can actually go through in full, with lawyers and witnesses and everything, and you can decide whether or not you are actually a criminal who was locked in here for a reason, or if you are falsely imprisoned. There's a lot of detail to everything in this area, which is extremely promising for the rest of the mod. There are a handful of locations you can access outside of the prison once you make your way out, with many, many more planned. There are a lot of really cool custom assets and models used in Fallout yesterday, many of which are original and look super impressive. They sort of put a modern polish on the art of the originals. Everything fits, everything feels like Fallout. This mod has been in development for a long time, and it's still years from release, but if the content of the full game matches what's here so far, we could be looking at a truly brilliant imagining of what could have been all those years ago with the Van Buren project. Because this video is a highlight and not a review, I'm not going to go into too much more significant detail other than that, but when the mod gets its full release, I will be diving deep, you can be sure of that. In place of that here for now though, I have an interview to share, so you can hear more about this project from the mind of its creator. Hello Ramblelime, and hello uh, viewers. I was known for many years as uh, just Hexer, and then I added um, the initials for my um, uh, first and by baptism name, so I was like, PJ sounds okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see that for sure. Uh, I just wanted to start off with asking you what your background is with games and modding and Fallout specifically. Oh, well, my background with uh, games goes, I mean, first game I created was, I mean, a game, if you can call it that way, uh, was uh, a module for Neverwinter Nights 1. That was in 2002. I created that for my friends and then released it online and it uh, got some great reviews. People were really uh, enjoying playing that because I put a lot of things which I liked about Fallout 1 and 2 into that module. That was like my first real experience of how it feels like to entertain people around the world. And that's what got me hooked uh, into programming um, and my career went uh, in a different direction there um, I was like more in uh, finance but um, game development always was present as a hobby for fallout um, i started tinkering um, i think that was in 2005 or something like that maybe earlier when black island studios released the editor for Fallout 2 and I started tinkering with that as everybody else did back then. Actually, no, uh, sorry, I'm mixing up two events. That was in 2003 when they released the editor and in 2005 they released Van Buren documentation. Uh, that's when they folded. Yeah, and then like after reading Van Buren documentation, I was like, okay, so this is uh, the only game I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was thinking Okay, wh wh why not? You, you know, you have the knowledge, you can do it. And um, yeah, I didn't start actually. I think I started for serious in 2008 and uh, didn't go pu public until 2014, late 2013 actually, because I was actually learning ins and outs of the engine, um, working on my skills and such yeah so this is your first mod project with the fallout engine yes this is the first one that I, uh, that i've released and um yeah it's been uh, going great i'm uh, currently on the third release of fallout yesterday um and i'm working on the fourth one uh, which will be the biggest one so far wow all right so third release came out in early february am i right with that yeah i was like planning on doing uh, these releases uh, like every couple of months after I finish, let, let's say, uh, a location or two. However, I realized that by doing these smaller releases, uh, the players are quickly uh, going through content. And I'm also sort of losing time preparing everything, packaging the files, testing. And then I was like, okay, maybe you should create the next release to be a bit bigger. Uh, and then have players like enjoy it longer, have more things to go through. So tell me about your team. Tell me about who's working on this, what each of you do. Oh, 
I, I can more easily tell you who worked on this. <laughs> so this is in a way a community effort from entire Fallout, uh, from the classic Fallout modding community. There are many, many resources in the uh, project which have been created by other modders over the years. Some of those, as I say, go back way back to early 2000s. And back then, uh, many mods started, uh, they failed because we didn't have the means or knowledge how to properly mod a Fallout 2 uh, engine. But today it, it's a completely different story. You can do just about anything inside of that. So um, the team um, which started, um, which worked like in 2014, uh, was at its peak uh, 75 people. So that all happened in a uh, span of six months, which was like shocking for me because uh, I remember starting, um, I was on the forum of RPG Codex and I just posted a note, hi people, I'm Hexer, I'm working on this uh, Fallout 2 mod, I think, and then I just showed them what I did so far and then I, uh, like two, three weeks passed and I was like, oh man, I need to do Van Buren, like, this is like, <laughs> yeah, th th this is like, uh, but you know, like, when you have, like, a moment of ep epiphany, you know, like, you, you realize, okay, yeah, that, that's what I need to do. Yeah, you realize and, that uh, this is what people want, this is what you want, and then... Exactly, yeah, people are starting to beg me, okay, I'll, I'll give you, uh, like, $500 if Whew. you put entire Fallout New, New Vegas inside Fallout 2 engine. I was like, okay, I'm not going <laughs> to do that. But that was a little ambitious to... there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was starting to get some, you know, ideas and uh, what, what should, where, where should I take this? The energy, the the knowledge, you know, like let's let's make some good use of that. People started like contacting me, like, oh, I'm gonna help you with this, I'm gonna help you with that, and like it, it was just like crazy. Like uh, suddenly, like I was handling a team of 75 people all around the world in different time zones, and um, yeah, it it was like. Uh, I worked a lot back then. I think I created about 6,000 uh, pieces of artwork in like seven months or something Oof. like that. Yeah, yeah, That's it's crazy. It's man. crazy. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. definitely ask about some of the art that's involved in the project. Mm. Like I, I've seen a lot of positive feedback that you've received for a lot of the custom assets you have. Are most of them oh, yeah. community yeah. generated or? Yeah, uh, some of, uh, have been uh, the original. Uh, I created them, and you won't find them anywhere else. But uh, some have been created by other projects and other community members, which I've uh, created properly. And asked for like permission, can I use this? And yeah, they were fine with that. And I also like um, point out like this is a game by fan for all the fans. You know, like so I remember there was a project. Uh, fan made Fallout um, FMF and they folded however they released all of their like work you know and that was like a thing back in 2000 maybe 13 or something like that and then uh, we uh, took that uh, content uh, okay let's see how we can make this work inside our own uh, game because you know as you know um, there are gaps uh, when you're in, and some things are missing uh, they're not being fleshed out and so we were like, okay, yeah, so we have like these great characters here, some good maps, maybe uh, we can uh, use them, yeah. So some of that work also ended up inside of uh, Fallout yesterday. So, uh, current team is pretty small, actually. The active team is only me and two writers, and I also have one onboarding member, which is sort of finding his way. He's not sure if he's going to be a programmer, or he wants to try out some mapping. I, I am feeling... Um, that a uh, small team works better. Everybody, you know, has... Easier to coordinate, test, yeah. Focus. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, very happy currently with uh, the skill set that we have in the team. We actually don't have a need for anything else besides this, uh, like uh, writers and uh, maybe uh, another uh, programmer mapper. With the design of Van Buren versus what you're working on, like... The yeah. Van Buren design documents only go so far. So I was wondering mm. how much of the Fallout Yesterday project is straight from what was Van Buren and how much of it is your vision or the vision of your yeah. team. Well, 
we had a vision in 2014 which i think was like all over the place uh however we did um we, we i believe we added too much of stuff that doesn't belong to the game i i feel that i'm now creating a much stronger game from like it's a more co cohesive experience you know like you don't feel like something's out of place i went out of my way i met uh, tim kane chris avalon and t ray isaac probably most of viewers are, are familiar with tim and chris uh but uh not so much as uh, with t ray t ray is the lead artist of fallout 2 and he also drew all the vault boy he, he was the person who created that little boy <laughs> the little mascot. i actually uh over the years exchanged many mails with chris avalon and uh, spoke to him in person i got some good uh information from him about how Prisp uh victor presper the main antagonist of the game was like yeah, yeah and there are things which i plan for expansion which are actually planned by black kyle studios but they never got the chance to do that how do you keep that motivation like you've been working on this project for what like seven years now uh, yeah uh, on and off definitely uh i felt like a bit tired and uh it was a bit uh too much because i felt like that when I looked at the source code, 90% of what was there was uh, created by me. Wow. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I, I can't keep up, keep up with this uh, sort of uh, tempo all the time. And I was like, okay, I need, a, I, I need a break and I'm going to... And also we had some uh, money issues because we wanted uh, CGI. We wanted uh, voice acting. So that was like, okay, now... I uh, need to, uh, you know, like, uh, came up with some sort of solution. How are we going to uh, fund all that? Because voice acting, as you know, and CGI are not so cheap. Yeah. And we feel that players deserve that. You know, you want to reward the player. It feels great when after, you know, running around for like hours, he stumbles upon a talking head, you know, and he's voiced and it's entertaining. Or when uh, he says a uh, great CGI, you know, that's like, um, it feels like, yeah, hitting a jackpot. Modern games have so many, so, so much animation and CGI that you like, uh, feel like, oh, yeah, I think special. <laughs> but yeah, in Fallout, uh, in those classic games, yeah, you're like, oh my God. This Definitely cool. a treat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still remember that uh, the, the, when, the, uh, when the ship sails for, uh, in Fallout 2. That animation, yeah, or well, the cathedral blows up in Fallout yeah, 1. Those yeah, are yeah. Those animations you never like forget because they're like, yeah, let's make this cool, you know. You, you can see that uh, Black Isle Studios are just like, okay, let, let's make this cool, you know. You can you can hear them saying that <laughs> yeah. as they're making it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What what advice would you have given to yourself when you started this project, knowing what you know now? Well, uh, don't pick uh, an engine that uh, <laughs> cannot rely on because I was planning on maybe doing a learning Unity uh, and maybe doing the entire game inside of that engine. However, yeah, I came back to, you know, something that was proven in two games. Yes, yeah. And uh, for motivation, I, uh, I find, I mean, this... Um, game building process entertaining it's like i'm making my own game you know it feels like you're in sandbox you know <laughs> like in the park as a kid you know you're just like or playing with those little lego bricks you know like just like creating something new yeah <laughs> so that, that's where it, it's a, sort of a, like two-way street you know like I'm building a game and, and game is like entertaining me while i'm doing that it, it's like a yeah, uh, there's a, a feedback loop of, of positivity going on there. <laughs> Absolutely, especially yeah. with so many people looking at your work and being inspired by it and liking it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I believe um, after the next update, uh, which is substantial, uh, I'm going to get um, more exposition out there. Because right now I know lots of people are very shy. Okay, I'll try the game and, you know, in some sort of bigger state or something like that so looking forward to that i plan on adding uh four new locations i'm actually rolling three 
smaller updates into be one big one for the next stuff so yeah uh, uh, this one is going good it's going way ahead of what i was uh, expecting uh, but uh i still feel like it's a uh, couple of months away sure yeah uh, just one more question before we end this off. I was wondering, uh, long term, mm. what does the project yeah. look like? What is your, what does the roadmap look like? Absolutely, uh, put everything which was planned for Van Buren inside of that game. Fill in the gaps in a logical way, which is consistent with what probably Black Hole Studios would do. Uh, create another new chapter in history of Fallout games. I believe uh, when it's done, it's going to be three times the size of Fallout 2. Woo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, expect to get lost in the world of big Fallout things, Big things coming. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, absolutely. Uh, thanks for coming on. Mm, thanks, thanks for, for doing this me. with me. Uh, where, can, yeah. where can everyone reach you? Where can everyone find the project? And where can everyone support the project? Oh, well... Um, I do have a uh, like presence on the forums. Uh, no mutants allowed. Uh, you can find the thread there. They're been uh, following um, uh, like the, all the news, all the releases. Uh, you can find on the front page news posts about the game. So yeah, you can fo follow from there. I have a Patreon, although uh, Patreon is used more like for fans who want to support our effort to have voice acting and CGI in the game. So I'm not pushing that to front line because I believe uh, what currently is being collected over the month it will be good enough uh, for for that in a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have everything linked in the description of the video so that whoever wants it can check it oh, out. Yeah. Whoever wants to tr try the mod it's, out, it's free on No Means Allowed. You can download yeah. it if you own a copy of Fallout 2. It's free, absolutely. Yes, yeah. and then you can support it. Oh in yeah, any one way reminder. To run the uh, game, you will need to own Fallout 2. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, PJ. Uh, uh, I wish you, you I wish you a, a whole bunch of luck with the right, with the project and with everything that you do in the future. Thanks. Yeah. And I can't wait to, to see where the mod goes next. Yeah. Looking forward to sharing my work with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely.